Welcome back to another episode of Wild Seas. This is Fishing Unleashed with me, Kieran, skipper of Unleashed Fishing Charters. I'm out today with another great group of guys that was out with me yesterday. We got on some epic jig and lure sport. So the guys have loaded up with more fish nugs overnight and we're out here giving it some beans and back on the fish. We're already ticking away plenty of wrasse and pollock. And throughout today's session, I'm gonna show you a few of the basics of how to use your slow jigs most effectively, how to set up to ensure that you are getting the best out of your session. We're in for a good day. It was a freezing cold start this morning, minus four when I got into the car this morning. Baltic winter's day, but it's been a beautiful sunrise and I can't wait to see how we get on. Let's go. Oh, oh. Oh, is he going to turn back? Yep, yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 Slow jig. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, he's a one. I like my sponsors. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I can't uh, take it. No, I don't think Sitting there. It would do quite a lot. Oh. oh. It's going to count for itself all the way up. Cod? Coley. Definitely Coley. Yeah? Napoleon. It was down deep though, wasn't it? On the deck. Napoleon. Them, them big green ones are basically Napoleons. The blue ones. Cornish Napoleon. Yeah, Cornish Napoleon. <laughs> The Cooches are the Cornish Kibera, the John Doria are the Cornish Roosters. Pollock are the Amberjacks. Yeah, Polsky in it. Yeah. Nice. That went well for its size, didn't it? Big fat Pollock. I told you that jig was going. Yeah. Man, real. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, good rasso. I'd say so, yeah. <laughs> Alan caught it. It's a rass. Oh, yeah. Netter. Nice. Yes. Pretty one. Get them spots on his head. Can you release? Yeah. Bosh. Like a rocket, that one. Drift so right down. Yeah? Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Fuck you once, I do. You're going to do me in a reef. You got no fins. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of weight to him. That was a lovely bite, single thumb and just bent over. Yeah, they're the ones straight in golfer. It's nice when it's ideally tight, you can finesse it like just, just hang it and find. What is it? Yeah, he's on. On the jig. You got to your tricks again. That's a better one. That's a better one. <laughs> Bit, Every time, mate. Yeah. Better than the last one. Come on, Mike. <laughs> oh, on the on the full mass. Uh, Pollock. Bloody. Okay. Yeah. Just like that. Whoa. Oh, yes. Whoa. Oh. oh. <laughs> nah, I just lost it. Fuck, man. That was a hog. Straight on on deck as well. Oh, look, they got good fish as well. Yeah. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's a good fish. Woo! Wait. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, nice fish, eh? Wait, wait there. To a smaller, smaller jig, like smaller profile, and then like an eight gram rock diver, a little bit shorter. Fish just being a little bit finicky, just start connecting with them straight away. Coley, nice. Woo! Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's kicking off now. We've got three fish on here. I've got a fucking donkey on here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a green one. I've seen it. You've got fish as well. Colour come off it. Oh, just, get, just carry on. Just green carry grass. on. We'll sort it out. Big it? green grass coming. Oh. Fish, isn't it? Yeah, we'll sort it out. Coley, there we go. Yeah, Coley here. What about that, Mike? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, boy, that's a good one, isn't it? Watch. Watch. Coley, and the turn. Oof. Yeah, Coley's, I think. It's all the Coley's. Coley ain't. Nice little quad hook up there, though. Four fish at a time, eh? Yeah, Coley. Here it comes. Good man. They go out. They do go well, don't they? Oh, yeah. we'll net that one, he's a bit oh, better. Yeah, that one. It is, it's bigger. Oh, it's a fatty. Oh, nice Coley. Yeah, and that is on the full mast. Mad Mac. It clearly is. No, it's right on the bottom. Beautiful cold fish, eh? Look at that. Nice fatty. So a big benefit when you're slow jigging is keeping your jig as vertical as possible and your line as vertical as possible. That's when the jigs are most effective because the jig will come up and just flutter down and the fish will chase it up, chase it down. When you're lifting vertically, you just get a much better flutter. So a good thing to do is first identify the angle of the drift on the boat before you drop down or do a test drop. So drop down, see what angle your line's moving at and then what I can do is I can buy myself a little bit of time in that vertical column without getting too much angle on my line by swinging it the opposite way. So at the minute, the lines are naturally going to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little swing, depending on how fast that is will depend how far I swing the jig, just to buy myself a little bit of time. So a swing up tide effectively, or up drift, I would like to say. So by the time the jig is down on the bottom, we're going to be more in that vertical zone instead of just dropping straight from the boat and then by the time it's already down there it's already got an angle on it so you're already fishing against yourself and then as you can see oh that was a hit straight away oh and again see how I'm working these jigs is I'm letting it hit the bottom and once I let it hit the bottom I engage my rear into gear take a lift and as I lift I take like quarter of a turn half a turn of a reel something like that depends how much I want to animate it if I want to really put some speed on it I'll take a full turn as I lift and then dropping the rod tip fast so I get slack in the line 
and that slack in the line will allow the jig to flutter on the way down. You have to have the slack in the line when you're using slow jigs. If you have a tight line, your jig is just literally just gonna drop down as you lower the rod tip. But that's not what you want. You want the jigs to flutter, which uh, of course imitates a wounded bait fish. So all I'm doing here, because the fish aren't rising super high, I'm lifting and flicking, taking quarter of a turn as I go, maybe working that jig up 12 to 15 foot. And then once I'm done that, I'm dropping away again. Oh, on the way up. Whoa, that was up high. Coley's chased it up. Just steady reeling it on the way up. Coley's it on the way up. <laughs> and I was like 40 foot off bottom then. <laughs> Crazy. That was pretty cool. Just like a steady slow retrieve of the jig on the way up. It does happen occasionally. And uh, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they're only mimicking a bait fish. And the coley here, really high up. And as expected, coal fish. Oh, and release. He's right on the bottom. Oh, it's going to take me in oh. the fucking cave. Oh. Nice. It's going to take some good angling to get this one out. <laughs> 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 Woo! Oh. Chase I really it. hope that's a proper bass. That would be a beast. Anchor up. Get the bloody net, skid. Oh, yeah. Back up, back up. What are you saying? Yeah. I just got this side of you. This, yeah. cannot, this cannot be a rat. Sharks just eating it. Ten sharks, mate. <laughs> the old 1994 Stella. Completely oh, left in it. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Nice pullet. Yeah, nice pullet. Bosh! Almost double, I'd say. High nines. Oh, he's double. Eleven. Yeah. Yeah, eleven or so. Eleven, four, eleven, eleven and a half, something like that. Nice. Concentrate on your dangling, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope it's a rat. It feels very heavy. What are you saying, Wookie? Good, good mate. It's heavy. Oh, I, didn't know, I didn't know you spoke English. But I can. I said no. I but I can see English. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Doing a lot like a rat, eh? What is oh. Oh. oh, there we there go, we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's a beauty. Oh, nice yeah. colour. Yeah, definitely. He's over four. There we go, Wookie. We're ready. Yeah. Pop him in there. Oh, he survived! Oh, yes! 
just five over five. That will do. Yeah, he's about five two, five three, something like that. Good old Bosh. Bosh. Yes. Nice. Yes, he's get up, boy. Now, is it red one? Who gonna show you one thing with this brass because it is blown. Yeah. Which means it's which means it's swim bladder. It's like barotrauma. So that means it's coming up from a deep depth. And uh, it won't go down because it will float because the air has not righted itself. So I've got a fish deflation tool here. Find the anal passage and go an inch back, pop it in, and you can just hear the air come out then. It's like a gentle massage as well. Just deflate the air. Here it's seizing out. All this tool is is basically a needle, a hollow needle. And out. Really clean, no damage as such. Then good head dive and it will go back. Are you ready, Breeze? So when it comes to my slow jig and setup, uh, I've got a small, low profile bait casting star reel. You can use this, you can use a star drag multiplier, you can use a lever drag multiplier, you can use a fixed ball rod with a fixed ball reel. Uh, it's a very versatile method, but this is my favorite style of reel to use because of the thumb uh, quick freeze ball release. It's very beneficial when you're slow jigging because you can just click it and drop away. On that reel, I got on this one a 28 pound H strand braid, really nice quality, thin diameter. Diameter is a massive thing to consider when you're jigging because that would determine how much line drag you will get through the water column uh, when you've got tide and movement and depth of water. So I normally advise something between a 25 and 35 pound quality H strand braid. You can deviate a little bit outside of that depending on what you're fishing for, but for in the UK, that's about all you need, to be honest. Uh, with that, I've got a nice 25 pound um, leader, mono leader. You need that bit of mono, especially when you're fishing around reefs, wrecks, and structure, because if you get a real good fish and it goes for the structure, it will cut you off if you are just straight braid to your jig. So yeah, on this style of fishing, I'm fishing a nice 25 pound leader. Uh, depending if I'm going around wrecks and bigger fish, I might go to a 50 pound leader. And if I'm going all out for ling, I might even up it to a 60 or an 80 pound leader just for that little bit of abrasion resistance. And to that, I tie my jig on. There's a numerous different ways you can tie a jig on. You can tie straight to the solid ring, like I've done here. I've done this because I was rushing because we're on the fish, I needed to get out on fast. You can tie a swivel to your mono and then put the swivel to the split ring to attach your jig. This is probably the strongest uh, method to use to attach your jig. That's what we do when we're overseas fishing. Or you could do like a Rapala loop knot onto the eye of your jig as well. All of those ways work well and they're all effective. Rod wise, I've got a 150 gram rated slow jigging rod. This is from Penn Conflict XR. Very nice bit of kit, not super expensive and does the job. <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> um, but yeah, generally a 150 to a 200 gram rated rod is perfect for here in the UK. It's not really any need to go any heavier than that. But yeah, let's get fishing. Another beast, five plus Balin Russ. Look at the colors on it. 100 gram, wreck rat, slayed it. Real solid fight as well. Beast. Let's get him back. And release. <laughs> Here goes the person of the day. Oh. There's something you don't see every day. This conga was floating on the surface, and as you can see, it's got a coal fish in its mouth, and it's basically choked itself out and floated up to the surface. It's dead as a dodo, so maybe we'll do something with it, put it to use rather than a waste, but that's mental. Coal fish is probably, I don't know, two and a half, three pound coal fish. Crazy. <laughs>
Big yeah, fish on here as well. What are you saying? Uh, Netto? Yeah, nice one. Oh, he's not bad. He went hard, didn't he? Could be a donkey if he was a ras. Oh, look. Look how fat they are. I can't even get my fingers around him. There we go. Hang on, on the nugget. Yeah. Yeah, nice, boy. solid, chunky pollock. Look at the gut on them at the minute. Fat as a pig. Fish nugs, full mast, underground, Mad Mac, killing it. Fat as a Wookiee. Yeah. And release. <laughs> Bosh! Oh, no Bosh! Right, with these, because they kicked like mad. Yeah, huh? Right, yeah, like the ras, one finger right up in its thing. It will thrash and it will go mad. When you're in there, grab him tight like you're going to punch someone okay. just because I don't want you to drop him no, no, and then yeah obviously make a hook with the other one and you can sit him there lovely <laughs> yes Wookie yes boys wow look at the bars of colour on it how many kitchen fishes did you fall do you like <laughs> wait can you move to the side yeah. no, he has got the same head shakes I must have met that last one Bloody brilliant, mate. A bit of massive rat, you might. I think it's a coochie, the way it dove. Just keep it tight, don't pump so much. That's a coochie. That's yes. a coochie. It's a little bit better when I walk up. Oh! Boom! Jinx it to a coochie! Yeah! Yep. Right, we'll get him into the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there we go, Wookie two for two on Cooch's Bream. Oh, Incredible. The conditions and the way the tide was just turned perfect to have a look at these creatures. I dropped us on a little pit for them. Bang, two in two drifts. Absolutely stunning fish. They really fight hard. Well done, mate. Mega, cheers, buddy. Right, we're going to get him back. Well, that is the end of today's session. What a cracking day. For the depth of winter, you literally can't ask for anything more. It was non-stop action, start to finish, fish consistently throughout the entire day. I managed to keep the boys on the fish. A mix of pollock, coalfish, and wrasse, well, they were relentless, crazy amounts of wrasse, really good fun. The guys actually really wanted to focus on the wrasse and try and get some bigger wrasse, which we did. So they was more than happy with that. Of course, we managed to get the pollock and the coalfish amongst that, as well as a few other critters as well. I think the highlight of the day was definitely seeing Wookie catch those two lovely coochies bream. Again, this time of year, we still get them through the winter, but to see two in one day is, it, it's definitely good, like man, we can't knock that. What a cracking day. I don't even want to anticipate how many fish we had throughout the day. A couple of hundred, we're definitely up there. Over the two days, the guys have had crazy amounts of fish. They've gone away very happy. I'm a happy skipper. Me and Sam's had a couple of fish in the mix as well. What more do you want from a cold winter's day session out on the boat? It literally doesn't get any better. The jigs and the lures, absolutely smashing it for everyone around the boat the guys that have never caught fish on slow jigs before they managed to get hooked up on them multiple times and multiple different species so they're more than happy i'm happy when will we get out again next i don't know we got a couple of days well i say a couple of days probably a week of real bad weather strong southwesterly storm rolling in so the boat's tied up tight ready for the storm i'm going to be at home keeping my hands warm because i've had enough of this cold weather